back with another lesson in the trig identity and equation unit. Um, this is basically our second last lesson. Uh, the last lesson is just some review. So uh, for all intents and purposes, this will be the last place we see a lot of new material. Um, so these questions you can try out yourself. I'll include the answers and you can just message me if you are stuck. Um, so today is the sum and difference identities. So these are two identities, um, or rather four of them. There's six of them actually. Um, two for sine, two for cos, and two for tangent uh, that you can use to uh, calculate angles that are not precise. So before I show you the identities, I'm going to show you um, how they work. So for example, this is the same thing as sine 90. So I think we can all agree that sine 90 degrees, if you split it up into two angles, would be 30 degrees and 60 degrees. Now, the whole point of these formulas is that you can split it up um, any way you like. Um, the reason we chose 30 and 60 is because those are some exact values that we know. So sine 30, for example, if you evaluate it, is 1 half. Uh, cos 60, well, that's just our pi by 3 angle, and that is a half. Plus cos 30, so again, that's just a half. Oh, no, actually, no, it's not. That's square root 3 over 2. and sine 60, which is also square root 3 over 2. Okay, so we have an we have an identity, so something equals something. Now sine 90, if you go look up sine 90, the y value at 90 degrees is 1. So does 1 equal a half times a half, which is a quarter, plus square root 3 times square root 3, which is 3, over 4? So I think we agree that 1 is equal to a quarter plus 3 quarters. So you can see that the identity works. Now we won't take a look at the second one, just for time purposes. But here are the first four sum and difference identities for sine and cosine. So what you're going to notice is that we have an identity that involves addition for sine, and we have an identity that involves subtraction. So if you go sine alpha plus beta, and these are just angles that you choose. So because you're going to be calculating things, you want to use the exact values that you know. And you can use any exact value, right? So any multiple of 45, uh, 60, 30, um, and we also know the 90, 180, those ones. So any multiple of this, you can plug in here and you'd be able to then use this formula here to figure out what the angle equals. So again, um, for sine, there's, an, uh, there's a plus equation and a negative equation. Uh, you'll notice that they're very, very similar. The only difference really is the sine here in the middle. Um, and then for cosine, we got an alpha plus beta and a co and an alpha minus beta. And again, um, you know, different pattern to this formula, um, but the only difference between these two are is the sine. So how exactly uh, do we use these bad boys? Well, I'm going to show you some basic examples um, of how you use these formulas. So like I said, uh, you're going to use exact values when you choose your alpha plus beta. So like I said, those are the multiples. And now you can solve questions like sine 75. So this is not exact, okay? But maybe you can use one of your formulas to break 75 down into two values that you know. So let's give you a moment to think about that for a second. And shouldn't have to think too hard. Um, I know that I could break it down to 45 plus 30. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and use the sine alpha plus beta formula. Okay, which I'm going to recopy from my formula sheet. So you don't need to memorize them, just need to know how to use them. Uh, oops, so it's plus cos alpha sine beta. They just switch. Okay, so now when I write this out, I'm going to write sine. And the order you write them in only matters so far as like whatever you write here is going to be your alpha value. So I'm going to make that 45. And then this one's going to be 30. So I'm going to write that it's sine 45 plus 30, right? Because that equals 75. And then wherever you have an alpha, you're going to plug in a 45. So I'm going to go sine 45. And then it's cos beta, so cos 30. And then I'm going to go cos alpha, so cos 45. And then sine beta, so sine 30. Now, because you've used exact values, you'll be able to know the values of all these angles. So sine 45, well, that's square root 2 over 2. Um, cos 30, uh, that's the long side, so that's square root 3 over 2. 
cos 45 is square root 2 over 2, and then sine 30 is a half. So almost done. I'm not recopying this, so you can just carry it down. So right here, we're going to get square root 6 over. Now, both denominators are 4, so I'm going to save myself some time and just write a big fraction line and go plus. So then square root 2 times 1 is square root 2. There. And you leave it as an exact answer. So basically, sine 75 degrees, you now found an exact value for that angle. Ain't that neat? Okay, so remember, these are all created when um, calculators weren't really a thing. Um, so obviously, uh, you can also do it with uh, radians. So all our examples so far have been looking at um, degrees. Uh, the radian ones are a little bit trickier, maybe, because usually you have a fraction involved. Okay, so obviously, cos pi over 12, that's not an exact value that I know. So I need to think about breaking down pi over 12 using the radian measures that I know. Right, so I know the pi over 3s, the pi over 4s, and the pi over 6s. Okay, so you need to get um, some sort of addition or subtraction statement that when you add them up or subtract them, you get pi over 12. So my biggest pro tip, because it's not obvious, is change these things to have the same denominator as this. Okay, so pi over 3 would be 4 pi over 12. Pi over 4 um, would be 4 pi. Oh, no, 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 no. I uh, got a, it would be, sorry, 3 pi. <laughs> I sounded so worried. 3 pi over 12. And then this one here just got to multiply by 2 over 2. So there, I have common denominators. And it's kind of like, okay, well, how do I get pi over 12? Oh, here it is. I could go 3 pi over 12 subtract 2 pi over 12. Right? And that would give me pi over 12. Well, 3 pi over 12 is pi over 4. And 2 pi over 12 is pi over 6. So it really is handy to get a common denominator. So now I know that if I go cos, um, it's going to be alpha minus beta because I'm subtracting them. So it's going to be cos. Now the first one is pi over 4. So that's what we're going to write. And then the next one is pi over 6. I don't recommend writing the, the ones with the equivalent denominator here because these are the exact values you memorize. So you go look up this formula on your formula sheet and this one is cos alpha cos beta plus sine alpha sine beta. And now you have your alpha and your beta and you're just going to pop them into the right places. So don't skip this step. So you got cos of pi over 4 times cos pi over 6 plus sine pi over 4 times sine pi over 6. Now, you've chosen exact values, um, so you should be able to figure them all out. Um, so this first one is square root 2 over 2, and then cos pi over 6, that's the long side, so it's square root 3 over 2 plus this one here, sine pi over 4, is square root 2 over 2. And then sine of pi over 6 is a half. And you're going to notice oftentimes you'll get the same denominator. Not always, but in this case, we both all the denominators are over 4. So I'm just going to make one big fraction. This one times this one gives me square root 6. And then again, square root 2. So cos pi over 12 is equal to this. And you just leave your answer like that. And boy... Are we ever happy? So I'll give you a moment just to let that uh, sink in. And we'll go on to the next slide here. So what have we got now? Ah, yes. This, the following question is so important because this is typically um, a question that shows up on the exams. It's a big four mark question and it has to do with the double, um, with the sum and difference angles. So take a look at it. Um, they give us the angle alpha in standard position. And they say the terminal arm is in quadrant 2, and cos alpha is negative 5 over 13. Um, angle beta is in standard position, and it's in quadrant 1. And here is the sine ratio for that. Determine the exact value of cos alpha minus beta. Well, let's take a look. Cos alpha minus beta, that's the one we just used. And the formula for that one is cos alpha times cos beta plus sine alpha times sine beta. All right, so let's take a look. I know cos alpha. Cos alpha was given in the question right there. So I know that one. And I know sine beta. Boom. Well, now it becomes, hey, how do I find cos beta and sine alpha? Well, you can go construct the triangle for each one that's given and figure out the missing one. So let's go do that. Um, in quadrant two, so we're basically over here. 
um, they're telling me that th this is alpha. Alpha is in quadrant two, and cos alpha is negative five over 13. Remember that cosine is your x value over your r value. So basically we have this triangle here where the x value is negative five, the r value is 13. And if you look at what I'm missing for alpha, I need sine alpha, okay? So sine alpha, well, that's y over r. So over here, can you go ahead and can you find the y value? Of course, it's just Pythagoras. Um, this is one of those special triangles, the 12, 5, 13. Um, if you didn't quite know that, right, you'd be going r squared minus x squared. So I will happily show you. r squared is 13 squared, so 169. Subtract the negative 5 squared, which is 25. So y is going to be the square root of 144, which is going to be 12. Remember, this formula will never give you the correct sign. Well, it might give you the correct sign, but you need to double check. So in quadrant two, the y values are positive. So we just figured out sine alpha is 12 over 13. So now you'll be able to plug that into the formula. So this is typically worth a mark right there. Um, let's go construct our other triangle. So the other triangle that's in quadrant one. So that's easy. And that's the beta one it says angle beta is in quadrant one. And we know that sine beta is three over five. Again, remember the format, um, it's y over r. So when I go construct my triangle, and this is angle beta, I know my r value is five, I know my y value is three, and I need to find my x value because I need to find cos beta. Now, cos beta is x over r. So this is a 3, 4, 5 triangle. Again, if you need to use Pythagoras for this one, it's um, r squared, or x squared is r squared minus y squared. So you can plug everything in. I'll, I guarantee you that you're going to get 4. So I'm going to just save some time. So cos beta, just do it down here. Cos beta is going to be 4 over 5. Perfect. There would be the second mark. The last two marks in this question is actually correctly calculating what they're looking for. So they want to know um, the exact value of alpha minus beta. Okay, now we don't know the exact um, things for alpha and beta, but we know cos alpha, cos beta. We just calculated all that stuff. So down here, you need to be very organized for these ones. Whoopsie daisy. We're going to go like that, and it's equal to cos alpha cos beta plus sine alpha sine beta. So now we know all these things from the question, so we can just pop them in. Generally recommend that you do that. Uh, so let's see, cos alpha was given in the question and the value for it was negative five over 13. The value for cos beta we calculated and it was four over five. The value for sine alpha, uh, we calculated over here, and that was 12 over 13. And the value for sine beta was given in the question as 3 over 5. There. So generally, it's kind of a mark to use the right identity and to plug it all in. And then the last mark is just correctly calculating it. So you'll notice that both denominators are going to be 65, right? 13 times 5 and 13 times 5. So you can just go ahead and write one big fraction line and have it over 65. So you get negative 5 times negative four, which is negative 20, and then plus 12 times three, which is 36. Add them up, 16 over 65 is the value of cos alpha minus beta. And that's the last mark. So that is quite a long question. So obviously that's why it's worth, um, you know, four marks. Now, there is a try it yourself. It's exactly the same kind of question. I really would like you to pause the video and try it out yourself. I um, pause the video now and I'm gonna give you the answer. Okay, so pause it and your final answer, I'm gonna give you a couple things here. So the things that you need to find, um, first of all, the identity is gonna be this one that you're using. So this is sine alpha plus beta. Okay, and now what's given in the question is cos alpha. So that one you can just copy in. And we also know sine beta, which is over here as a third. 
All right, so you would have been going and calculating sine alpha and sine beta. So sine alpha, you're gonna get uh, negative four over five, and cos beta, you're gonna get negative uh, square root eight over three. If you simplified it, that's okay, um, but you don't have to. When you do everything, uh, you're gonna get four times the square root of eight, subtract three over 15, and you can leave your answer like that, and I suggest you do. You don't want to make any mistakes, because if you make a mistake, you'll lose marks. So there it is. To try it yourself. Uh, let's see what's coming up next here. Ah, uh, yes. So we also need to do the formulas for tangent. Tangent is uh, a little bit harder. Uh, they don't generally use it on the exam, but it could pop up, obviously. So here are the two identities. Um, you'll notice they have a fraction. And uh, they are on your formula sheet, so go ahead and locate them. You don't want to lose them. And uh, the questions are very, very similar. So I chose one that's a bit trickier, uh, but certainly something that could pop up on the exam. Now, for something like this, uh, where you need to figure out um, either two angles that add up to this or subtract, so there are multiple ways to get to the answer. Okay, you just need to find two things that work. Okay, now this one is way less obvious. Um, if they do this to you on the exam, it's quite evil, um, and it could happen. They are evil people. So I really recommend that the first thing you do is you recopy these using whatever denominator we have here. So get a common denominator for all of them. Um, and boy, if you're struggling with that, I don't know what to say. <laughs> so here we go. So there's the common denominator. So you'll quickly establish that there's no way that you can add these together or subtract them to get 11 pi over 12. So that's an indication that you need to use some bigger exact values that you know, okay? So like if you're going around the unit circle, right? Like these are the three angles in quadrant one, but then there's the three angles in quadrant two, right? Like you got um, pi over six and five pi over six, and you got pi over four and three pi over four, and you have two pi over three, right? So maybe take your two pi over three, uh, get a common denominator. Now that's gonna give me eight, pi over 12. Aha! If I add up these two, that's going to give me 3 pi plus 8 pi, that's 11 pi. Okay, so this 11 pi over 12 is the same thing as tan pi over 4 plus 2 pi over 3, right? So I'm not writing these ones because that's going to confuse me. I'm writing the exact values that I'm familiar with, okay? I'd say this is the easiest way to figure it out in the case that they give you one that's kind of tricky like that. Um, doesn't generally happen, but it has. Doesn't usually happen, but it has happened before. All right, then all you need to do is just go and look up your formula for um, tan alpha plus beta. Okay, so the way I wrote them, this is alpha, this is beta, and this is the formula. So I'm just going to directly apply it. So I'm just going to write tan of alpha, so pi over 4, and then it's plus tan beta, so that's 2 pi over 3, all divided by 1 minus tan alpha, so tan pi over 4, times tan beta, which is 2 pi over 3. Now, you were smart and you used exact values, otherwise you wouldn't have gotten this far, and you know all these values. So at pi over 4, um, I'll just... Um, or did I make a mistake? Uh, no, I just wrote perfect. <laughs> I wrote it in the exact opposite order of uh, how I did it in, in my notes. That's okay. Um, so I'm going to do tan 2 pi over 3 first, okay? Because that's the one I did first. So um, when you're in quadrant 2, um, the value, right? So for pi over 3, the value for tan is square root 3. When you're in quadrant 2, though, at 2 pi over 3, it's negative square root 3. So there's that one. Pi over 4. That's the one that has a tan value of 1, because you're in quadrant 1. And then in the bottom, you have 1 minus, well, tan pi over 4, again, that's 1. And then 2 pi over 3 is negative square root 3. So um, you do have to clean this up. Okay, so you can't leave it like this. You need to clean it up. Uh, the order you write these in doesn't matter. So you could write 1 subtract square root 3. And then down here in the denominator, you got some work to do. Uh, you got one subtract, multiply those two together. So you have one subtract negative square root three. So you're going to get one plus square root three. And there, now you can leave it like that. So you got 10, 11 pi over 12 is equal to this. 
And whoo boy, I'm glad we're done that one. That one really sucked. So thumbs up to you if you stuck with it. Uh, let's see what's next here. We're almost done. Uh, right. Well, there's a couple more things we can do. Um, you might have these uh, show up in identities, okay, uh, that you might have to reorganize and solve. So, for example, um, these questions are sort of confusing because, uh, you know, it's not an identity, but it's like, hey, simplify this. Okay, so this is a backwards question. Now, I, I hate to call something a backwards question. But go ahead and write that title up here. Right, it's um, you know, they give the equation, right? So we have the equation. Um, we need to find the left side, right? Like normally you'd have cos alpha plus beta equals, right? So they gave us the right hand side, um, and we need to try to figure it out. So if you look at the cos cos and the sine sine with the negative sign in between, you'll realize, hey. That's the formula for cos alpha plus beta, right? Except my alpha in this case is 3 theta, and my beta in this case is theta. So once you realize that, you can say, okay, well, this thing equals this, and alpha is 3 theta. So I can just write cos instead of alpha, 3 theta plus beta, which is theta, and hey, these are like terms, right? 3 theta plus theta, that's like having 3x plus x. So you can just write it as cos for theta. So you've simplified it. So you took this thing and you simplified it out. Seems strange, but it is something that happens. Now this last one, it could happen. Um, probably wouldn't, but it's not very hard. Like you just look at this. This is really easy because it's the tangent ones, right? Now look at the, the signs here and you'll identify, oh, this is tan of alpha minus beta, right? And this is the alpha value and this is the beta value. Okay. So it's just as simple as writing in, okay, pi over two for alpha, pi over three for beta. You might be wondering, um, do you need to simplify this? And the answer is yes. So if you do the math and get a common denominator, I'll give you a moment as I do it off to the side. So a common denominator would be six. That would be three pi over six for the first fraction and two pi over six for the second one. When you subtract them, you get tan of pi over six. And hey, that's a value you can calculate, right? The tangent value at pi over six is square root three over three. So you're done. There you go, there you have it. So last thing, um, what if we get one of those nasty trig equation questions? Well, it can certainly happen. And uh, for this one here, um, this is nothing new. I'm just giving you another one. I've basically been doing one of these every lesson to make sure that uh, you see enough of them. So uh, this one does involve a sum and difference formula, right? So if you look at the structure of this, Okay, so you see the negative sign, and then it's sine, cos, and cosine. If you go look that one up, um, doo -doo 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 -doo, I do believe that it's going to be sine alpha plus beta, right? So just go back and confirm. Uh, that was back here. So sine alpha plus beta, yeah, it's sine alpha cos beta plus cos alpha sine beta, and that's sort of what we had here. Uh, oh no, it's the one with the negative sign in between. So let's go back and look. Where is it? Where is it? I don't have my formula sheet handy, so uh, I suppose it would be this one here. Yes. Right? Like you need to make sure everything matches. So we had a negative sign and then sine cos cosine. Okay, obviously the order of these could switch because they're being multiplied, but the negative sign and having sine cos is what matters. So it's actually sine alpha minus beta. Okay, so scratch that and write a subtraction sign. This is your alpha value. This is your beta value. Just confirm that they're the same in each case. So now it's kind of like that last question we did where I can just write in, well, okay, um, so alpha is 5x and then subtract beta is 3x. Okay, so I just replaced this whole part of the formula with this and it's equal to one. So I'm going to recopy equals one. Now inside here, you can go ahead and subtract five X minus three X is two X equals one. 
and you have an equation that you can solve now. Um, they're looking for over 0 to 2 pi. So when you go find your reference angle, remember you're, you're finding 2xr because that's the beta value, and you're going inverse sine of 1. So 2 xr so sine at one uh, what is that now be careful because we're in radians so the only place that the sine value is one is this point here which is 90 degrees or pi over two so you write pi over two all right um, solve it for your reference angle so divide both sides by two and you get pi over four. So that's one of your answers. Now just recall that if you have a beta value of two, you're gonna have twice as many answers. Okay, so your period, all you gotta do is add your period. So for this function, the B value is two. So period is two pi over two or pi. So in order to find the next answer, all I gotta do is add pi to this answer. Um, so that's gonna be four pi over four. So the other answer is going to be 5 pi over 4. And there you have it. Um, do these questions pop up on the exam? And the answer is yes. Um, this is a, a particularly tricky one. Uh, you are more likely to get this question starting here. So would they give you a question like this starting here asking you to solve? Yeah, it can happen. You might get one. Um, would they give you this question starting from here? Uh, probably not. Like it could happen, but I see it as a roadblock because... They don't like giving you questions where you get where they mix too many concepts together. So in my mind, they, they probably wouldn't. Um, but you're prepared for it if they do because we did it. Okay, you guys. I'm so happy to say that we got to the end. Oh, there's my big happy face. I have three happy faces. I'm so happy to be done this set of notes. There you go. So uh, thanks for joining us, and we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.